Quick tip for people who are using a Wacom tablet. If you want a great show, put two polygons in the same plane and use Q to move the camera around and then try to keep your hands still. I'm not seeing any movement of the cursor, but I'm seeing a great show in the background. All right, so we need to get rid of that Z fighting. Uh, we're going to do so in this tutorial using the offset command, which you can read about on the Shader Lab page called Culling and Depth Testing. So offset's going to allow us to leave the vertices in the same, all the vertices in the same plane, and without you know using transform to change that, or without using rendering cues and different Z testing, um, eliminate Z fighting. If you use offset zero zero, then that's the same thing as using no offset whatsoever. So you never have to bother with offset zero zero. Just leave offset out if that's what you're going to do. But if we make a change to one of the two parameters, then we should see a change in what's being rendered. This is purely a trick with the depth buffer, and we'll get into the ramifications of that um, in a little while. So we'll start off with saying offset minus one, and I'll explain exactly what the minus and the one is in a little while. We'll say minus one, zero, save that, and go back into Unity. And it appears that we have things rendering as we want until you start looking relatively straight on to the polygon. And if we were to go into isometric view, then it disappears completely. And we can see, if I move zoom in and out, some error that occurs at some points and then disappears. But basically it's just invisible until we move the camera and now it's visible again. So that's weird and of course won't work. So make sure we're looking straight on again. And now we'll use the second parameter. Make that minus one as well. And now we're getting good results in isometric view and in perspective view. The reason we can't have just the first parameter by itself is that the first parameter takes the slope of the polygon in screen space into consideration. So right now, in terms of the screen, this is basically flat, so we're not having any contribution, or very, very little contribution of that parameter. But as soon as we start adding an actual slope, then it's being pulled forward all right. Um, so let's go ahead and add that back in. We, you can use fractional values, so we'll say minus 0.5, which is not quite enough. So when you have a value of 1, that's supposed to be, in this case, negative 1. I'll get into that in a moment. Um, the unit of 1 is supposedly exactly as much as you need to stop the Z fretting from happening. And the, the negative means that you're taking the pixels and pulling them towards the camera. If we were to change this around so that they're positive, so 1-1 one, one now, then the polygon is they're still being uh, potentially rendered, but they're being pushed farther away than this plane in the depth buffer. So it makes sense that if you have no slope, that you'd need to have some sort of extra help when you're looking, you know, when you're looking dead on, there's no slope. Why it is that you can't have no contri contribution of the slope and not have it all fixed when you just have something for the second parameter, it is slightly improved. So here's 0 minus 1 and here is 0, 0. So my, putting the minus 1 in does help. Why it doesn't completely fix everything, I don't actually know. So if, you, if you're watching this video, you probably don't know either, because this is kind of a beginner's tutorial. But if you do, please tell me, because I'm very interested. And even if, like me, you don't quite understand what's happening when you have no uh, first parameter, but something for the second, I think it may be important that you understand how to work with it. Because in my experience, now I only have an, uh, one older device that uses the uh, MBX Lite GPU, and that's a second generation iPod Touch. But using that, I have tested uh, a lot, and I have never found the device to respond to the first parameter, meaning that it never takes slope into consideration. However, it does respond to the second. So although minus one doesn't quite cut it, for this scene I've tried minus eight, and that's good enough for me uh, let's get rid of the sphere for the time being. And it's good from most angles. The only time it really becomes a problem is when we're looking at a real grazing angle. You can see a little bit of green showing up here in the red. 
just a couple flicks, flex of it there. Um, but who's going to be doing that? Even from any sort of reasonable distance, it doesn't matter. So we'll try minus eight. So what you do want to keep this as low as you can, because let's uh, let's try bumping it up, say to minus nine nine nine. Then it's fine if we just have if this is the frontmost object. But let's introduce that sphere in, into the scene. And now, I'm not doing anything weird. Other, I'm just moving the scene view camera. And as I move farther out, the sphere is disappearing. Because there's greater precision in the depth buffer when, you're, when something is near to the camera. So it's being pushed. This plane, the smaller plane, is being pushed forward. This one. Uh, pushed forward by 999 units which is no big deal when you have a bunch of precision and you have a bunch of units to work with near the camera but as you pan out, zoom out you have fewer and fewer units so it's being this uh, sphere is starting to intersect with the plane at some point and then eventually the sphere is just being completely overwritten whether it was rendered before or after it makes no difference this plane is virtually in front of that sphere despite the fact that if we look at it from the side we see that unlike with moving using the transform, moving the vertices, um, it's not actually moved away. So it's always rendered in the right place on screen. It just might be covering other things up. So that is the drawback of using the offset command. However, it's probably going to be what you want to use in most cases because in most cases you can use these really small values and although that same thing will be happening it'll be happening to such a low degree that it might not even be the difference of one pixel on screen and finally as I said the older GPUs probably in my test with one device again so let me know if this is not true for you um, although the second value might work fine let's say minus you know minus eight again it was what it was Minus 8 might work fine in the editor. It might work fine on the old GPU. However, the newer GPU found in my th iPhone 3GS will not do so well. It requires the help of the first parameter. And so this will, won't look any different in, in the editor using the GPU I have in my MacBook Pro. It won't look um, any different on the old older iPhones and stuff because they don't respond to the first parameter. But it should clean things up for the newer devices. I want to finish this video up by telling you exactly why offset is generally better than the transform based approach. So here is a, we're not using the offset shader, we're just using a transform. The smaller plane is moved forward 0.3 in the Z axis. So we can't see any Z fighting from any distance. There's probably is Z fighting right about there, but I can't tell because there aren't enough pixels to find out. But as we get closer, the lines don't match up and we can see space in between. And again, if we were to make that small, say, 0 0.01, then up close we're fine, and we can't tell that they're actually in different planes, but as we move the camera out, then we're going to get Z-fighting. So it's based on distance from the camera when you're using a transformer-based approach, but with offset, because it is based on the depth buffer, it's going to be as if you were moving this plane farther and farther away from the plane in the back as you move the camera out. Not actually happening, no matter where, like no matter the distance from the camera, these will actually be in the same plane if you were to look at them from the side or whatever. They're just, they're actually like in the same plane according to screen space, but you'll never have the Z fighting issue then. So just make sure that you are using high enough values for these uh, which I think should be minus one all the time for the first one and then for the second as much as you need for the older devices and if you're making an iPad game I assume you could probably just use minus one minus one and that should be good um, if you, for older devices minus one you know maybe minus one minus ten will be good just make sure you're using great enough values and this will be, will be better than a transform based approach